Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And one of the best analysts for historical and geographical as well as military aspects is Tim Alexander, who's going to set up a, a third news service across uh, the United States and worldwide some years ago before his wife got ill. He is the primary anchor on our live stream TV channel. And of course, we have plans in 2013 and beyond to expand the Nutramedical Network, the Nutramedical Clay and Iron Network, dramatically. Uh, we are going to be adding many more contributors to our live stream channel, including Professor McCanny, who will be posting many more reports. In fact, I hope to have him back next week. He's been away for a few weeks. But, uh, Tim, your analysis uh, gets to the point deeper than a lot of the other people I've seen on many other radio talk shows. Uh, you get to the point in terms of what's really going on. You see beyond the news and the blather that's on CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, which is probably the worst of the lot, uh, to what's really happening. And uh, you mentioned just on the break now, like I'll, I got you about what Russia's response was to the latest moves and statements by Obama. Uh, tell us about that first on Syria before we get into the issues. Yeah, well, get, yeah. The uh, Duchess. Uh, yeah, I want to get to the Duchess thing, uh, story because that's very, very strange, the Duchess of Cambridge. But anyway, uh, okay, this thing on Syria. Now, I've been really on edge the last couple of weeks about Syria. And uh, it's Christmas time, and, you know, and, and it's I, I've been on edge about it. But I, I'm much more relaxed. Oh, I still think it's going to be uh, uh, probably a trigger for World War III, but I think it's been pushed down the road a little bit. Yes, and let me tell you why. Um, okay, sure, uh, NATO's not backing away, and yesterday Obama recognized uh, these international... Uh, jihad terrorist as the sole government of uh, of Syria. Well, what a joke. Okay, but yeah, but even though they tried to name name one group that they said was, well, maybe they were terrorists, and of course there's a big flap over that. The fact <laughs> is, ninety five percent of the so called Syrian Free Army are not even Syrian. They're foreign yeah. terrorists brought in there to actually do regime change, completely back military intelligence wise, even called web based. Um, Satellite internet, satellite communications, even and it's beyond missiles. shameful what they're doing it's, to Christians yeah, and every right. every and, group and, that and missiles and weapons. I mean, it's just disgusting. And this idiot we call our president, who sits there real with this flat kind of pan face, saying, "Oh yeah, well, well, one of these groups we don't like." No, no, you're giving these weapons because you don't give a damn. Who has but, a weapon? But, but Including but these the same people, by the way, thing. have sworn they're going to kill Americans and they're going to use missiles and man pads against American aircraft on American soil. So you're flying out of Denver, you're flying out of Chicago. Don't be surprised if one of these idiots gets a hold of a missile, sits five miles off the uh, uh, tarmac and the airplane airline taking off and it's, and it's, it, it's just taking off from the runway and all of a sudden one of these man pad missiles blows your aircraft out of the sky because we've given these missiles to Al Qaeda says they're going to come, they've actually said this publicly come to our shores in our country and they're going to kill us and knock our aircraft out of the sky. They've already stated this after we give them the weapons to change the regime in Syria. They've yeah, done well, that we're, we're, we're supporting some of the worst uh, people on earth. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm talking cold-blooded uh, murderers and, and yeah, well, they want this. So Islamic want extremists. That. They want. They want this so they can give Islamic extremism a bad name. But here, but they, also, but, but, they want this though, so they can they can prove to us that they will take away the last shred of our rights. They'll shut down alternative radio. They'll make certain that you have to show your papers, pre, please. And everybody, by the way, in March of next year, they they've already had this law passed. They want us all to have biometric IDs. So you won't just show your papers. You'll lean over to a police crew or a scanner to have your retinal scan, your 10 digital fingerprints so you can know you who you are. Can you say Mark of the Beast? Yeah, we're getting there. And so they, they want but, but, like 9-11 hey, was an Al-Qaeda operator. Before we go operation. down that road, I want to tell you yeah. what, uh, the, the Secretary of Defense made a comment far more important than what uh, the teleprompter-in-chief did, no, and the yeah, right. uh, uh, teleprompter-reader-in-chief did. And the uh, Pandetta said that the situation involving chemical weapons has now backed down, and it's, 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 it's okay now. Now, let me tell you what really happened. What really happened was the same day 
that NATO finalized everything uh, to put NATO uh, Patriot uh, missiles into Turkey on the Syrian border. That very same day, two large Russian assault Navy assault ships pulled into the port of Taurus, Syria, and unloaded a large number of Iskander missiles. Now, these Iskander ballistic missiles are the nastiest ballistic missile on Earth. They are hypersonic. They maneuver in flight. They have a fairly short range, depending on the model, around 200, 250 miles. They are designed to kill high-value NATO targets, such as Patriot missiles, uh, what other they have a range to, that will cover Israel and most of Turkey. They are virtually impossible to see on radar and impossible to hit and knock down by any anti-missile system that, that uh, exists on Earth today. They are the nastiest thing out so, there. So, so, Tim, I know you sometimes can do accents, sometimes you mangle words, but I want you to be able to say <laughs> check, checkmate in Russian. Checkmate. I scoffed her. Missile. Yeah. yeah. What no, I'm saying is this. I would say, 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 uh, say uh, you are Amerikanskis. How do you say in Syrian and Russian, checkmate, NATO? <laughs> Well, exactly. Russians are very good chess players. Very good. Uh, also, the, the a, a uh, another Chinese general has made the statement that uh, if Iran is attacked, it means uh, the Third World War. And of course, attack well, on Syria is the. Well, they're already preparing for a war with Japan with the Kuril Islands. They've Absolutely. already so ticked off. They've actually announced to all the regional generals in China, we're taking the Kuril Islands and to hell with the Japanese. And by the way, the Japanese are armed to the teeth with nuclear missiles. Arm to the teeth. People say, oh, they're not a nuclear power. I said, you know what? Of course no they are. for that level of stupidity, you know? There's no defense. Of course defense. they are. What do you think are. Fukushima was they all They have about? missiles. They have missiles and bombers loaded with them. They, 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 they've, had, uh, they've been a nuclear power for 30 years. Yeah, but not only that, the largest supply of nuclear materials outside the United States and Russia is, guess what? Japan. Japan. And you know where else is a, a, a giant stockpile of nuclear missiles? South Korea and Taiwan. Do you know the reason why China doesn't seize Taiwan? Because they got enough weapons to wipe out every square inch of China just in Taiwan alone, let alone South Korea and Japan. China is literally sitting in, a, in what I call a bear's trap. Oh, well, they, they, they the don't Chinese understand, understand uh, Mao's statement quite well. Power comes from the barrel of a gun. Well, I don't think they understand. You see, they consider themselves the Chinese, the nation of the dragon. No, no. They're not the nation of the dragon. The nation of the dragon is America. Nobody understands that the empire of America is the very beast that it says in Revelation that I saw a Greece great and powerful that was diverse from all the others and it crushed and broke all the nations of the whole world. That's America. We have weapons so, centuries yeah, ahead of everybody here's else. The tr here's the trouble with that. And you're talking to someone that was has been involved with three leading-edge aerospace design bureaus. I'm good at what I do, and I, I but, you know, I, I, I don't like going there anymore because the wrong people control our government, and it always Oh, yeah, they're going to use these things. Back and even if they have the weapons to protect them. war for tiny Israel. And by the way, China, uh, Jimmy, and the Jimmy, globalist. It, it, they, even though they have the capacity to protect America and not have the loss of American lives, they're not going to hold, hold their level 10 weapons. They're not. Not until the very last minute or if they feel they have to. They're going to let our Americans die. They're even going to let a first strike hit and kill 100 million Americans. They don't they care. They want us to die. Right. We're useless eaters. To right. the globalists, the globalists have only have to themselves. Only exactly. to themselves. They get zero respect for us. In fact, this movie that's coming out, The Zombie Apocalypse, isn't just about killing off quote, the zombies. It's killing off Americans that are gun own guns and other things. The real enemy in the zombie apocalypse is not uh, the zombies, which, you know, they're useful, uh, if you'll call it androids, to destroy society. The real danger to the quote, globalists is American citizens who believe in a republic, believe in the rights of the citizen to pr be protected from the majority, not by the majority, and the idea of have personal autonomy in terms of whether it's health care, the right to not be taxed to death, so you can accumulate wealth to have actual real business and economy. That's what the globalists want to destroy. They want to tear it out of our hearts because they've torn it out of the so-called court system right up to the Supreme Court. We'll be back in a moment.
And we're back. Uh, Tim, you always can find some interesting stories. And, of course, you often deal, you worked a number of years ago with Burke's Peerage. This story about Kate Middleton uh, is very interesting in terms of this nurse. Uh, yeah, well, I've, had a, that, uh, I've had a British so. title for about 30 years now. You know, you're, by the way, you're fully American, and your ancestor was the, you want to call it the financial patriarch of Washington uh, himself and the uh, Continental Army that actually fought against the British. So, well, you know, you have these. Yeah. yeah, kinsmen. Anyway, so let's go back to this Kate Middleton story about this nurse, Jacinta Saldana, who is a, uh, a, a Thomas Catholic from India. This story sounds very strange because you, when you told me this on the break, I said, "What? She was found alive, conscious, and alert, but yet she died." And then right. they can't well, find her. Well, she hung herself. Her. Uh, everything about the story stinks, and it, there's a whole, whole lot more to this uh, this story. We're not even beginning to touch uh, does, on what really happened. First off, she supposedly it sounds, uh, shades of maybe the uh, suicide of Princess Diana. Or the death. Uh, well, you mean the, the death by Princess yeah. Diana? Yes, it yeah, reminds it me of that. But I'll tell you what it reminds me of: the so-called suicide of of uh, Doctor Kelly. Ah, the dear doctor who died, as they say, he was suicided, just like uh, uh, some of my other good friends, like uh, you know, jumped out of a window uh, yeah. in an impossible posture with a uh, surgical. The thing around her neck and ankles, stark buff <laughs> naked in a in a, in, a, in a basically yeah, yeah. A, a posture that no human being could assume in an impossible suicide. Yeah. Well, exactly. okay. She uh, supposedly was so humiliated, and and it, she couldn't have been. Uh, she committed suicide. Now, first off, the the lady is a nurse from India, and she's a Catholic. That means she's a Thomas, almost certainly a Thomas Catholic. Uh, the, the, the Christians, uh, there are some several communities in India. They're called Thomas Christians. Some are Eastern Orthodox, some are Roman Catholic. Uh, literally, the apostle uh, Thomas went to India 2,000 years ago and spread the faith. And these people, and I, I know uh, a uh, Orthodox priest uh, who's a Thomas Catholic from India. And I want to tell you, these people are extremely religious. They've had to, they've been surrounded by a, a, a sea of pagans, and uh, it's very hard to believe that over something so trivial, she would have committed suicide. And she was, uh, by by all the reports of her family and friends, was had a very good relationship with her family. She had nothing going on in her life she wasn't unstable. Now, you're a physician, and uh, let me ask you this. They, they say that she committed uh, suicide by hanging herself, but when they found her, uh, she was alive and conscious. Did you, did you know a show about 20 years ago called Quincy, who was a pathologist? Oh, yes, I, I remember. Okay. Well, think of Dr. Deagle. Now, I'm a forensic examiner as well. I was certified in every specialty and went to court sometimes in Denver up to three days a week in the morning before I started my practice. And I can tell you, if someone's talking to you and they're conversing after the so-called suicide with a hanging, they're not dead and there's no brain damage. Yep. Okay? So, in other words, if she was dead afterward, it's because they killed her after she supposedly suicided. Uh, yeah. It's just like, you know, like, as I say, the, the Dr. Kelly issue. So, in other words... You know, I get very suspicious. Anything that happens, by the way, around the the royals in Britain makes me very suspicious. Because well, of I, I was Diana. Scottish editor at Burke's Peerage. My partner, uh, his wife was a French countess. Her her hus uh, her her brother was a, a duke, and they were related to a lot of the royalty in in Europe, and including uh, the the Duke of Edinburgh. Uh, people would come in. Uh, German princes would come in. They'd visit. Uh, uh, Elizabeth, uh, Lilybeth, and and uh, Philip, and then they would go visit uh, Brookie and Urin at yeah. their house. And I used to hear the inside stuff. So believe me, yeah, there, there's if I had to start talking, believe me, it's it's something else. But anyway, let me let, let, let me yeah, let me go on with the this. story. Yeah, I want you to continue. Okay, uh, now uh, she uh, she supposedly left a suicide note. Yet six days later, no one, including her husband and children, knows what the note said. Hmm. Very, very, very strange. Okay, she was supposedly humiliated by the prank call. 
But when you listen to the tape, it, 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 her role was insignificant. She answered a telephone. She said, hello, King Edward Hospital. How may I help you? And the Australian playing the role uh, of the Queen, which was not very convincingly, she said, uh, uh, hello, how, may I speak to my granddaughter, Kate, please? Now, uh, never once did the DJ say she was the Queen. Uh, and she didn't even really sound like the Queen, too high to speak too high-pitched and speaking too fast. Um, how? And Kate, by the way, is a fairly common name in the United Kingdom. Um, how would she even know that she was referring to the Duchess of Cambridge? Uh, she merely transferred the call to another phone. Okay? So why was she so humiliated? So in other words, all she did is she transferred the call to another phone. Exactly. Oh, my God. I mean, uh, so, if you're a friend of the investigator, you'd no say, right, right, right off the bat, you'd say, this case does not hold water. If you're Quincy, you'd be no. kind of, you know, he'd have a Quincy look on the on the television show, and he'd be Yeah, saying, a good friend of mine is, he, he'd is see his uh, eyebrows a pathologist, kind of he those, and, and, he, and, yeah. He'd have those I big, always uh, think of him when I think of Quincy, but Quincy, was, uh, I, I love that show. But this is, this everything about this smells. Oh, yeah. Well, okay, he had you have to understand, I, long I big before the too, public so. ever yeah. knew that there was a problem with the Prince of Wales and Princes Die, I knew it. Because I heard all the inside information. My mm. partner, if he wanted to, and he, and he, and he did this, he would uh, arrange for a note to be put on the Queen's breakfast tray and carried into her. I mean, so I know all the inside dirt. And there's something very, very wrong here. Yeah. I don't what know do what information a, a, she heard or what she saw, but something well, is going down here that they're covering up. They didn't want to do this. Well, but okay, they, this they, way. Wh they, somebody whacked this nurse. Yeah. Well, let, let me just postulate a, possible, a couple of possibilities. Some in humor, some not in humor. Uh, it wasn't definitely Rosemary's baby, let's put it that way. Uh, but what we could be dealing with is maybe there's a complication. Maybe they has a baby has a birth defect like Down syndrome, and they don't want the public to know about it. Uh, and maybe she had this knowledge, and so they don't want it to know. Like she had hyperemesis, she had you know gravidarum, she had very very bad nausea. You sometimes see it with children where the ch mother has a baby with Down syndrome or some other birth defect. Did you know that? Could so be. hyperemesis, hyperemesis gravidarum is very much more common in children, mothers that have a child that is carrying a birth defect like Down syndrome. And believe you me, the London papers would pay a fortune for that information. Right, and of course, uh, what they'd want to do is they'd want to, of course, say, oh, she just miscarried. Well, they may have had an abortion because they don't want it to be known that the royals would actually abort a child that has disabilities. It would go very badly in the well, press. You, you, that would be, be my it, it, most likely guess. Could well be. That could well be. Also, you have to understand that, that there are so many secrets in the royal family. For instance, the Duchess of Windsor, the uh, American divorcee who married uh, Prince Edward VIII, always called the Queen Mother um, that Scotch cook. The reason she called her that is because her real mother wasn't the Countess. Uh, it, her real mother was the French cook. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Interesting. And joining us, we have uh, Chris Harris. Uh, we want to wrap up this uh, thing about uh, the Duchess and... Uh, uh, what's going on there, and uh, then back over to Chris Harris, who hasn't been here for about three weeks. Uh, Tim, t if you want to summarize, where do you think this is going to go? Uh, well, I think they're going to have to pull every string in the book to keep it uh, a lid on it, and I don't think it's going to work. I think uh, something very nasty is going to perk out over the next few months. Well, I think the news will get out. I'm, I mean, and it remember could now, bring I'm a doctor the royal family I'm a, down. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a medical doctor and a forensic. Most people don't understand is the British Empire is a financial empire that didn't end in the Second World War. The Fed Reserve, which is a reserve bank, is run primarily by British-based banks and the uh, Queen of uh, which the Which are essentially <laughs> Rothschild and, and Goldman Sachs. Right. They're ba and, ba basically, they, then this is something else people don't understand, that uh, Kate Middleton is a Rothschild. People don't understand that. She's a Rothschild. Yeah, and, uh, I... Uh, 
I, I've I read that. I, I don't remember the details. It's it, it shocking. Yeah, I got the so details much. on it. I got the details. Now, she's a wonderful girl and whatever, but her bloodline is she's a Rothschild. What we have to understand is the Rothschilds, just like the Napoleonic Wars, where they sold out false news so they could take over the British stock market. That's why people like George Soros, he has a warrant for his arrest. If he arrives in Britain, he gets arrested. He can't go to countries like Switzerland because he has a warrant for his arrest. Yet he's the main puppeteer of our current president who's declaring war in Syria, supporting al-Qaeda, who have made statements last week that they will <clears throat> shoot down American aircraft on American soil with missiles that we gave them. Now, that's how it's all tied together. So I'm willing to bet that the hyperemesis gravidarum that Kate Middleton is suffering is because she's sick and she has a baby that's abnormal. And the most likely abnormality is hyperemesis gravidarum as the child has Down syndrome or another birth defect. And they they wanted to quietly go away that she may have an abnormal child because they don't want it to be known that the, she could have a child with Down syndrome. I love my daughter, Kelsey, with Down syndrome. She's a little angel. When you see her behave, behavior, you think, well, I'm in the presence of an angel from heaven. That's what you feel like you're in her but, presence. But it, it becomes a real complication in, if, if, in terms of uh, because this is the eldest son of the eldest son. And, Wouldn't it be uh, funny if a, if a future queen of England could have Down syndrome? <laughs> <laughs> well, that uh, yeah, from their po- perspective, and, and I can tell you some other stories uh, in in the the Queen Mother's family, uh, something like that did happen. Uh, yeah, I know. They, I, I know. And, listen, I I know some very ugly things about the royals down through the centuries. Most people don't realize these people are so inbred that when you saw the death of the Tsar and Tsarina of Russia, that you could have said these are first level cousins of the royals in Britain who called for the death of the Soviet of the Russian Empire, and through the proxy of the Rothschild banks through J.P. Morgan that paid for the guns to be made in Pennsylvania to be shipped from American foundries to Russia to have an American. Uh, Armed Forces and Canadian Highlanders take over uh, St. Petersburg and Moscow for six and a half months before their guns arrived because the Russians didn't have anything more than pop guns. This is the kind of evil that's going on from the royals. And this is the last spasm of the of the British Empire and its ultimate there's control. A, there's, an ancient, there's an ancient prophecy from Thomas the Reiner hundreds of years ago. He said, from Elizabeth to Elizabeth will be England's finest Tsar." And Elizabeth II is a very old lady. Very old lady. How old is she now? Almost 90? Uh, I think she's like 86 or something. Yeah, I think she's 86, 88. The, the fact is this, that they, they're devoid of conscience. They're devoid of conscience. Okay? And people don't understand. These royals act like they're above the rest. They are called the people of clay and iron. These are people that literally, the clay, their human flesh is indwelt by demonic entities and powers of darkness that are that are so evil, people say, oh, I can't believe that. And that's why when you see people like Hillary Rodden, Rodham Clinton, their family were high-level uh, Illuminati witches and warlocks for centuries doing sex magic rituals and human sacrifice. Why do you think she married Bill Clinton? Why do you think she's going to run in 2016 as the first female candidate for president? But she'll save us a lot of money. We won't have Air Force One. She'll fly on broomstick one. Yeah. <laughs> Always good. Now we want to we better like Chris talk. Yeah, okay, Chris, it's time your turn. Tell, give us an update on what's going on because we see no evidence whatsoever. I know we're going to approach next Friday. It's called uh, you know end of the world day, which of course is not going to happen. But real disasters like this recent earthquake that happened 7.3 off of Fukushima that did cause a surge in my radiation detector here in Southern California. The real issues like preventing an American Fukushima are not in the least happening. And the current new director of the NRC is doing squat. The current president and idiot in chief are doing nothing. And Congress isn't paying attention. I contacted senators from California and Washington State. I got no response from Senator Feinstein or Senator Wyden in Oregon. I'm not impressed. What I see happening is experts like you that come out. And by the way, your name isn't Chris Harris. That's your radio name. But you are one of the top safety experts in nuclear safety, and they have to damn well listen, or there's going to be a catastrophe. So give us the latest news on what's coming out and what's happening in Fukushima, because the Fukushima disaster is just getting worse and worse, and they're burying it. Now they're telling the children to learn how to mock people that think radiation's bad. 
They're literally teaching kids in Japan how to mock, and then women are being told, don't even think about getting pregnant in northern Japan. Don't even think about it. Uh, I guess uh, a week uh, or ear earlier this week, I sent you an ABC News article that is pretty much the way the industry is going to respond or is going to try to respond to the new orders that are going to require a lot of additional emergency equipment to be able to be used in case of a Fukushima type of event, you know, heaven forbid, here in the United States for these for the plants that are here. And uh, yeah, I'd yeah. like to describe it really yeah. quickly. Uh, what they intend Yeah, that's the rescue happen. wagons they're going to talk about. Uh, they're going to have better equipment, which is good, but it's like you need a lot more than just rescue equipment. You need to have major backup power systems, which they don't have. You need to make sure that they have uh, a way to make sure they have newer technologies so they don't have these old-style reactors. We've seen from Fukushima that there's major engineering defects in the same kind of reactors that happened in Japan as we have in America. How many Mark I and Mark II tile style reactors? We discovered new ways for them to have hypercritical events or to have hydrogen explosions just from the Fukushima disaster, but none of that knowledge and experience is being put into place to not wait about putting disaster wagons in place, but changing well, the engineering or completely upgrading the plant to new types of nuclear technology like pebble bed reactors or uh, new technology, which is, you know, being hidden, tokamak fusion reactors. Otherwise, we're going to be facing with a catastrophe. Well, no one can deny that the effort to uh, have, uh, you know, additional emergency procedures, equipment, and I'm going to keep on bringing it back, the training. You can't water this down. You can't water it. The bean counters cannot cheap out on this. I'm going to use the word cheap out. The training, the training. Well, they're training. cheaping out a number of people. In fact, I think it's been predicted in Japan will run out of trained people to handle the Fukushima place within, what, a six months or a year? And here in America, if they ever had a major disaster and they had two or three plants that was just sandy that had major loss of power and major breakdowns of normal control systems that lost control of the, of the power plant, and when you have a hot shutdown, you know there's going to be a major surge and release of radiation, thorium, tritium, etc., that occur from these plants, and the plant also gets physical structural damage. Well, as, as late as, as uh, the 12th, yesterday, uh, Unit 3, all right, now I know Unit unit uh, 1 was having a spent, uh, Unit 4 was having a spent fuel pool cooling pump problem where they needed to get people in. But even Unit 3 is having a problem keeping spent fuel. You know, it's an ongoing situation. On a good day, you need routine and good maintenance to keep all this stuff running. You can't get... You're talking about in, 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 in Fukushima, because what yeah. Ernie Gunderson has said, they're pumping in nitrogen to prevent the critical reactions, but if you pump in too much, it flushes the radioisotopes out. So they're running, walking this tightrope, and periodically there's a big radiation surge. After the 7.3 earthquake, there's another radiation release, but you're never going to get honesty on the part of the Japanese or TEPCO or GE. And your, our government and the press releases from the White House are ridiculous. They didn't do anything. In fact, Obama has told people, now he's reelected, he still supports the nuclear industry in building old-style nuclear reactors in America and relicensed the building to proceed now at top speed with old technology. Yeah, and it's very difficult to keep it going on a good day when you have a normal plant. There's nowhere that these operations are normal now. So it's it's worth it spending the money on, on getting extra, I mean, really extra people that know what they're doing. Exactly. It's not just the being Important down. Just training, down. training. Back in a moment. <laughs> Okay, Chris, um, I guess America isn't satisfied there. As uh, Ricky Ricardo said to Lucy back in one of the shows many years ago, hey, Lucy, I know your problem in his typical uh, Havana Cuban accent. Ye Lucy, you're jealous. In other words, America is jealous of Japan. Those Japanese have had a nuclear disaster. We haven't had ours. What's going on? Let us have one down in the Madrid or along the East Coast. We had Sandy. We had three plants go black. We're not going to. We're going to park more equipment outside the plant. We're not going to really change the engineering or fix things, which came up in these reports. We're going to just kind of do a fancy dance. Uh, I find it stark and scary when they want to restart, for example, San Onofre, and they continue to wrangle with the local environmental uh, groups here in California, 12 miles from where I live. I'm very disturbed that Diablo Canyon hasn't been completely shut down. But now we know about all these other plants where new ways that hydrogen explosions or critical reactions can occur, and they haven't got a clue about the fact that their technology is freaking dangerous and they need to stop it. 
They need to re-engineer these plants. Or when a disaster does strike, just like in Japan, the nuclear industry is dead. Now, I have to tell people this, because I'm going to repeat it. I'm the one that brought this story forward, and I had one idiot try to, con- to crit- uh, criticize me six months ago and say, no, Dr. Deagle, you didn't come up with this. Yes, I did. Peak oxygen. Listen to me. I'm writing a book on this. It will be published next year. Peak oxygen is the big problem. That's why when you see these sci-fi people talking about dome cities in the 22nd century, if we don't get our act together, we keep keep only killing the benthic layer of the oceans and chopping down the rainforest, etc., and paving the farmland, we're not going to be able to generate enough oxygen to ride, drive our SUVs, okay? So, yes, maybe we can make artificially oxygen in giant machines underground, you know, in some kind of machine world that generates oxygen using, you know, spirulina or some other organically engineered algae. But the fact is that the when you, you, you are, are not going to be short of fuel. In fact, you can burn up in, in just the oil pot. They've done calculations of the number of, of you know, terra moles of oil that are present down in Venezuela just in that one deposit. And if you burn the whole thing off, the oxygen concentration on Earth would drop to damn near zero. So the fact is our future in our world requires us to move to new energy sources, and there's no such thing as peak oil. That's a pile of garbage. But there is an issue called you know, it's peak oxygen. Now, it is recyclable. If you generate CO2, it's actually a good thing because the plants will respond by producing more oxygen. But there's a limit because when you kill the oceans by poisoning them, when you cut down the rainforest, when you pave that song like uh, pave a parking lot and put up a parking lot, you know, pave the farmland, etc., guess what? You can't generate oxygen. You can't turn the key on your car, turn your weed whacker or anything because you're taking the oxygen out of the air. So if you have an A380... Carrying 800 passengers, you know, for a long flight from, say, Europe to America, one hour of an A380 uses up as much oxygen as every human being on Earth breathing for 24 hours. People need to get it. Peak oxygen is an issue, and we have to have a future that's safe nuclear, and I mean nuclear fusion reactors, pebble bed reactors, and not any of the technology we use now. What we use now is freaking dangerous, and we have to re-engineer it, or we're going to kill ourselves with radioisotopes. We have to displace and get rid of these radioisotope materials. We've got to move to safer nuclear technology, because peak oxygen is going to be a big barrier, not peak oil. That's a pile of BS. Peak oxygen is a real issue. And, and, uh, we need to have other methods of, of producing energy. That we can. We can do that. We, we can do it with uh, safer nuclear yeah. energy, especially fusion energy from helium-3 nuclear fusion reactors, pebble bed reactors developed in South Africa, even the can-do reactors in Canada where they use low-grade uranium uh, materials with heavy water. Uh, those are much safer technology. You don't hear about them talking about the danger of a Canadian reactor blowing up, do you? Well, no. there, there's a different, different technology. That's right. Right, you don't. You'll never hear it. You'll never hear a story about oh, a can-do reactor in Ontario blew up. No, it's not going to blow up. It's, yes, they do have problems, but nowhere near the kind of problems of these Mark One and Mark Two reactors or these tube reactors like they have at San Onofre. These are crazy technologies. Crazy. This is insane. Well, let's see if we can uh, do some more planning and 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 make them at least the ones we have, and they're here now. They're not going to be. Obviously, you know, I originally thought San Onofre might have been through, and, and uh, it, it does look like they're going to go through a, a testing phase and then a restart, and, and hopefully that will, the testing phases will be short enough to be able to catch any kind of a degradation before any kind of releases happen. But I, I would uh, say... When they get up to pressure, the tubes vibrate because it's a, it's a redesign. They did, and we talked about this before. Like for like engineering is, is an engineering principle with a sharp pencil. It's not based on reality. They changed the engineering of the design. The tubes literally in the higher pressure uh, because of the laminar flow uh, of the superheated steam inside these uh, generating tubes vibrate and bang against each other and the uh, face, the plate that they're attached to, and they literally create massive surges or release of radiation. Okay? So the fact is we need to start being more honest with ourselves, you know, rather than saying, oh, no, no, you don't understand the nuclear industry. Unfortunately, I do. And, yeah, I, and the more I, questions I ask, my father and principal, if I know what I know, what you know, I'll know more than you. And I've asked enough questions and checked and seen enough plants designed for these nuclear reactors. We're nuts to continue 1960s or 70s style nuclear reactors and just kind of 
dress it up with a little bit of window dressing and put it back online and say, oh, it'll still work for another 20 years. That's craziness. We need to put the money in. We also need to realize having nuclear power isn't something that's like, oh, this is never going to make be equivalent to oil, etc. We need to develop more safe nuclear power, and it's not a matter of money. It's a matter of oxygen. If we continue burning up massive amounts of, of air and oxygen to generate power, eventually we're going to hit a wall where the Earth's capacity to convert CO2 back into oxygen is limited. That's going to be a real problem in the 21st century, and people don't get it yet. Well, that, that was illustrated in the Keeling Curve. I believe that's what that was. And uh, that was... You said the, the Keeling that, Curve, you say? Yeah. And that shows that there was a decline of oxygen. It was... Uh, no, you're, you're yeah. not wrong. I'm not saying you're wrong, but sure. I know, and that's why I tell people say, oh, you're pro or, or for nuclear. No, I'm for nuclear fusion reactors, and I know because I had uh, classified Q-level security clearance, I know that that nuclear fusion, tokamak fusion reactors that generate no radioisotopes have been available for over 40 years. We have safer reactors, even the Kandu reactor, the pebble bed reactor, are just two of the far safer reactors, but rather than changing the technology, they're going to reoperate plants that are damn dangerous, have been proven by TEPCO. And by the way, the Fukushima reactor was a nuclear weapons development site for enrichment of plutonium to make detonators for nuclear warheads. That's why, they're covered, so, that's why they're so damn determined to cover it up, because they're, we're on the knife's edge of a nuclear war with China. And by the way, if there's any suggestion that China would ever even try to invade America, it's not going to happen because we'll nuke them flat on a pancake from Taiwan, North South Korea, and Japan. And Japan is, the Japanese are just, are twitchy. They're not but, at all happy But the with Japanese them. public absolutely would not stand for Japan being a nuclear power. The powers that be behind don't give a damn what the Japanese people uh, of think. Of course, of course. They don't give a damn. And, and that's why they, 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 they're letting their country be destroyed to keep the secret so they can keep power, keep themselves in power. Well, I talked to a Professor McCann, and he has pretty good evidence that the Sendai earthquake was a Israeli Rothschild-sponsored uh, superquake uh, because it didn't have typical P waves, caused the strikes to the Sendai area because the Japanese were giving nuclear isotopes to Iran that, by the way, you, no matter how much they lied to you because it's part of Maruna and Takia, they have nuclear weapons as well as Saudi Arabia has nuclear weapons that were brought there as well. So Saudi well, has nuclear so weapons. Well, the Saudis paid for the Pakistani program. They got several. Right, return. so when they say, oh, no, we don't have nuclear weapons, listen, these people are lying <laughs> hunks of human... Pieces. There are, okay. are many undeclared nuclear powers. Right. Many, I, I sat in a seminar back in 1994, and they told me how many nuclear powers, and they had a 45-minute video presentation in their media center, two miles underground at Falcon, uh, Shriver Shri 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 Force Base, Falcon, Colorado, two miles underground, and they said, these are all the nations on this giant digital screen. And they had Disney artists, actually, that made this digital presentation for foreign leaders. And I was sitting there freaked out and saying, oh, man. And I was like, my eyeballs are just like popping out of my head when I was watching this video presentation of all of nuclear powers. Guess what? There's so many undeclared nuclear powers, including powers like Japan. Even Brazil probably has nuclear has, probably, uh, has nuclear weapons. So when people say they don't have it, garbage. Same with Hugo Chavez. You can get damn well guarantee you, Hugo has Russian and Chinese weapons on his soil. Medium-range nuclear missiles aimed at Uncle Sam in America. He might be dying of cancer, but he has the button. Let's put it that way. Yeah. It's a crazy world. No, it's it's a stupid world. It's a world full of liars and gutless cheats and people that won't tell the truth. And people and acting for Satan. And people that don't know better because they think they know the issues backward and forward and they don't have a clue. Yeah, right with God. Yeah. It's amazing. You're going to get more straight here on this program than anywhere else on Earth. Listen to every show. You're going to hear new updates. And check out the live stream channel. We have great contributors. Thank you, Chris and Tim. Back tomorrow with The Firing Line.